All right, there, there we go. Thank you, Treasurer Garrity, for bringing us down to the Pennsylvania vault. And from what I understand, this is the largest operational yes. vault in the country. It sure is, and we're honored to have you and your staff here with us today, it's great. So tell us a little bit about what we're going to see when we go into the vault. Okay, so first I'll let you know that this was built in 1939. And at the time, it was uh, a cost of just under $600,000. So if you fast forward today, if we built it, it would be over $12 million. So That's incredible. Yes. And there's 400 tons of steel, and just this front door alone is 60 tons. Well, it took quite a bit of effort yes. to open the vault doors. And so you could definitely feel it's very, very sturdy. Yes. But it holds some of Pennsylvania's treasures, and some of those treasures belong to other people. Yes, so we have four billion dollars of unclaimed property. So that's billion with a B, which is a huge amount, which could really be helpful to a lot of people right now when inflation is so high and people, some people are still recovering from the pandemic as well. So one out of 10 Pennsylvanians has unclaimed property and the average claim is around $1,500. And we did upgrade our site um, last June and so now it's much, much easier to do a search. You just go to patreasury.gov slash unclaimed property. Um, a screen will pop up. You put in your name and you can check for yourself and your family and your friends. And um, an average claim takes about eight weeks. And of course, if individuals are having a difficult time navigating the process, can they can call. always call me, their state senator or their state representative and we will be happy to assist them in the paperwork. Absolutely. So it's not just money that sits in this fall. Tell us about some of the other things that we're going to see today. Yes, yeah, so typically it'll be kind of any uncashed check that's gotten been dormant for three years. Some people will have an accounts and they'll forget that they have them. So some people will have like a rebate check. So it comes from, you know, all sorts of uh, items typically from financial institutions and then we have a lot of tangible items that we get largely from abandoned safe deposit boxes. Um, so if, if a bank, if a financial institution hasn't heard from you in three years, so that's like no contact whatsoever, by statute, as you know, um, they have to return it to the state. And then we will search typically for the tangible items about three years to find the property owner. And if we do not find the property owner, we have two auctions per year. However, that money will stay for the owner in perpetuity. So even if they came five years from now, 10 years from now, that money from the auction or the money from you know, the, the bank accounts or uncashed checks would still be there. You also have something that's very special yes. in here that you don't ever dispose of. That's right, military decorations. And they have been some of the most heartwarming uh, reunions that I've seen where loved ones have been reunited with deceased family members' uh, medals. Yes, just uh, in Westmoreland um, County at a VFW, we had a reunion and um, it was the family of Frank Musto was his name and uh, he was a World War II vet, um, was injured and I think it was in the Battle of the Bulge but uh, the one son had his purple heart, the other son had a bronze star. Well, the son, and he had eight children, so the son passed away, the one that had the bronze star. And so they really cherished his service, and they had his uniform with all of his medals, but they were missing the bronze star, and they thought they would never get it back. Well, you know, we played detective, and we located them, and um, we had a really nice ceremony, and they were so touched that they came and had a tour of the vault just a few weeks ago. Having been a House staffer and now a legislator, I can tell you that when we have been able to make those connections with people yes. and their money, um, it has been very, very rewarding and so meaningful. And we have remarked that it really makes a difference in people's lives. And I've been shocked. Have the first big amount of money that we found for a constituent they were financially struggling and received $13,000 and it was like a gift from God yes. that they received that money and I know how meaningful it is so let's check yes. out the vault. Okay, let's take All a right. little tour. So these are some of our military decorations. 
And we have things, um, gosh, so they're pretty much marked, but we have the United Nations Service Medal, we have Good Conduct Medals, uh, Army Commendation Medals, um, some Korean War items, and whatever was precious to the soldier. So you'll see yeah. they have like rank from their uniform. So there's some major rank, there's some E7 rank, and they'll have, um, you know, just all kinds, like that would be a unit uh, meritorious uh, citation badge right there. And then they'll have, um, you know, their, their marksmanship medals. So anything that they saved, and this would have been like on an old dress uniform, um, yeah. colonel rank. Well, and with your own military service, I know how meaningful this is oh, to you personally. It is. It's very near and dear to my heart because every one of these medals tells a story about the sacrifice of the veteran and their family members as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, just this past year, we were able to return 226, but That's we still incredible. have 500. So we return including uh, four Purple Hearts and three Bronze Stars. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. That is absolutely wonderful. Yes, and if we go to this page, you can see the Purple Hearts that we have left. Oh, my goodness. A couple of years back, we had a gentleman in the community. He often would go down to the Rudders in Loganville yeah. and have coffee, and one of the community members heard him tell the story about his medals. He had his Purple Heart, but he didn't have the certificate that accompanies it, yes. nor did he have any of his other medals because he had given them to his sister for safekeeping. And she had a home fire and oh. the house burned to the ground. And he was approaching 100 years old and really wanted those medals. We worked with the family, got his DD-214. Yes. And we were able to work with the Defense Department to get replacements oh, of those medals. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and I'm, sure so I'm sure it was so touched. Oh my God, oh my goodness. It was incredible. Uh, the community came together at the 4th of July blast and did a special presentation ceremony. So when one of these comes into the vault, what type of information do you have about it? Just the person who had the safety deposit box? Well, sometimes we don't even have that. Okay. So I'll give you an example. So one time we got a Purple Heart back and all, the, all we had was a, a, a clipping from a, a newspaper article. So they started uh, you know, trying to track down the individual. World War II veteran, again, mm -hmm. um, was hurt at the Battle of the Bulge and um, tracked, he was in his 80s living in a warmer state than Pennsylvania, and uh, tracked, tracked him down and uh, was able to return. And of course, like most World War II vets, didn't really want to talk about his service, but his, uh, his family members were just so touched to have, yeah. to have it back. So we have six cages, okay. and each cage has 145 drawers. Okay. But when we get property in, you know, it gets inventoried, cataloged, barcoded. And we have some interesting items here as well. And I don't have my glasses, so I hope I can read this, but here is like a um, 2,000 pound of sugar ration check. <laughs> From World War II. Yes. And there's some letters from Lyndon B. Johnson and Albert Einstein. And so these are all treasures we don't know to whom they belong. No. But so anything like this, obviously, we save. Wow. These are letters? Yes. Written home from soldiers, it looks like. Yes, and here's some. Um, stationery some uh, discharge paperwork. That's definitely Civil War era. That's incredible. Yes. And so we have some interesting items in here I think you would like to see. So this is some of the jewelry wow. that we get from the abandoned safe deposit boxes. So here's some diamond crusted opera glasses. An engagement ring. Yes. And then all the silver, this came from a bank in the Philadelphia area, and so I believe it's from the 60s. This is really beautiful. When these materials come in from uh, a bank deposit box that has been abandoned, um, you keep it all, or do you just keep what has great value? 
Oh no, we uh, well, there are some things that we don't keep. So, like okay. if there were weapons, we wouldn't keep that, or very okay. very large items, we wouldn't keep those. Um, the other items, yeah, we we keep them, catalog them. I mean, if they're so just obviously like obviously you work with jewelers because not everyone would assume that that's actually all we do. diamond so, encrusted. So two our two auctions a year they're with Pook and Pook from Downingtown. Okay. And so they will do the appraisal. They will you know if there needs to be any polishing or you know yeah. and um, those auctions are quite successful. I'll have to check it out. I know. If you open this drawer, they okay. would probably. So that's more of that silver. Oh my goodness. And you just. So there's candelabras, there's different serving dishes. Wow. Beautiful treasures. So where can people find out about the auctions that you do? So we advertise them. So we do one in the spring, one in the fall. They'll be advertised. And Pook and Pook also advertises. Here are, uh, so of course we don't keep weapons, but these we believe are dueling pistols. So of course they're disabled, but right. they're kind of unique. Right. So if we find unique things like that, then we'll, we'll typically keep them. And of course silver coins and Gold uh, Kruger and oh, thousand dollar bill. You're right. Where's that? That is right here. I don't think I've ever seen one. Yes. Grover Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. And the five hundred. I've definitely seen twenties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those I've seen. <laughs> Instruments. Well, so we'll even get things uh, from universities. Okay. Nursing homes. I mean, it's largely for financial institutions, but periodically, like I showed you from the police evidence locker room. So there are people who are working down here in the vault? Yes. Computers? What do they do? So typically what they're doing is, when, so you'll see, we'll get property in, in boxes. Okay. And um, what month do we get most of our property in? April. So we get most of it in April. And so what they're doing is they're basically they're doing inventory, cataloging it, uh, then we barcode it, um, so that people then can you know get online and check to see if they have anything. Wow. And we always appreciate when you send the information out to us. Yes. We typically will check for constituents when they come in while I we know. have them there. And if they're that's doing so a great. property tax rent rebate, if they need to get. Uh, a senior discounted registration for their vehicle, we, we will check and make sure that they don't have any unclaimed property while we have them there because right. then we can very easily print off those forms yes. and let them take care of that. Yes. So. And soon um, we're going to have a direct deposit function. So we're really excited about that. So we have a fast track option. So last year for the calendar year, we gave back $135 million, which is pretty close to pre-pandemic. Dollars this year, I think will be around 160, but my goal is to get to 200 million a year. And I know we can do it. <laughs> well, we will do everything we can to Thank assist you, you in you. getting to that, to that target, <laughs> that goal. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is Senator Kristen Phillips Hill. Hi. How are you? It's nice, nice to meet you. you. I hear you have a really fascinating job. Yes, I do. I so do. you inventory, catalog, Yes. Get this up online so people can be reunited with their property. Yes. Yes, we um, we get reports like kind of similar to this with your property and security bags like this. And then we have, we just take, we'll take them out and we sort them. We sort the property out and we just verify what's on the list what is in here and then we catalog it into the database. Neat. Yeah. Most fascinating thing you have ever seen come across your desk. Oh gosh. You mean like Ritzy or like what whatever uh, you think is fascinating. We had a um 
piranha. A stuffed piranha we had. Stuffed piranha. It was auctioned for thirty dollars, right? I, I actually was the one who inventoried that. You were? I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I like the historical stuff. I like yeah. to see the you know when I see like letters from the war or like you know medals coming through, and I like that stuff. You know, yeah. I'm a truly dedicated service person to the servicemen and women. So. Well, it sounds like you're in the perfect place. Thank you for what yes. you do. Yes. And uh, you know that stuffed piranha makes me think that beauty is always in the eye of the beholder. So I'm not yes. sure I'd want one of those, yes. but yes. Now, one time we had $2 million worth of gold and platinum bars. Mm. Right. Now, right, from an, it was in a safe deposit box. And um, so we did find those owners. They didn't know that they had misplaced it. So they were I bet very they happy. They were to, very, very they happy. They were very happy. And just recently, just a few months ago, um, there was a daughter of a couple who was going to get married, and so they went to get the, the, they had a special necklace that they wanted her to wear. They went to their safe deposit box. Well, they hadn't had any contact with a financial institution, with a bank, for three years. And so they called Treasury. Fortunately, like the timing worked out perfectly because we had just received the property. So we had people work, gosh, about 12 hours just to be able to return it. They came and picked it up like the day before the wedding, and the daughter was able to walk down the aisle Aww. with um, the necklace that I believe was from the, a grandmother. Oh, that's so, really special. Was, yes. But it is a good reminder to everyone that if they yes. do have a safety deposit box that they need to be they need to check in contact in. with At their bank. At least once a year they should check in, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes. Good yep. thing to note. And what I really love about this is that there's a York I connection know. here, right? <laughs> there York sure is. Safe and Lock Company made in York, yes. Pennsylvania. <laughs> York is renowned for making things, and we've made the largest operational vault in the United States for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That's a really, really neat thing to know. It is. I'll show you something that's kind of cool. Okay. It's like a house of mirrors. Yes, it is. <laughs> So this goes all around the vault. Well, it stops, um, so they have like uh, whatever equipment, a condenser or something. There's like mirrors, so you can always see if anybody was ever trying to breach. Really? So, yeah. You'll hear it. There you go. It's shut. Yep. 